Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Deborah Gilbert. I'm uh, the Regional Director of American Photographic Artists, New York Chapter. Welcome and thank you all for watching this uh, this afternoon. APA is very proud to be collaborating with Adorama on these monthly events. We are also proud we get to collaborate with the School of Visual Arts, also known as SVA. So it's great to bring all three of us together today for this event. And let me tell you a little bit about APA in case you're unfamiliar with us. We are American Photographic Artists. APA exists to provide business tools that help phot photographic artists of all levels run a smarter, more creative and profitable business. And we've been doing it for over 40 years. APA has a strong heritage of providing benefits which help our members achieve creative and financial success. Our members come in many forms and by joining APA, individual artists join a community which can amplify their voice on the national stage. Joining is easy and to make it even easier right now for anyone uh, in the audience today, whether uh, uh, today, uh, not in the future, but if you're watching right now, APA is offering you a special discount code to save you $20 when you join APA at any level, anywhere in the country. To claim your discount, go to apanational.org, that's apanational.org, and click on the join button, and then put the code ADORAMA in uh, to get your $20 discount. There are five different levels of membership starting at just $50, so check them out and choose the level that's right for you. And now on to, to Marco. Uh, Marco is an educator and visual artist. Uh, he's the director of operations for the Master of Professional Studies at uh, in Digital Photography Department at School of Visual Arts here in New York City. And he co-teaches an editorial photography class in the program, as well as Adobe Creative Cloud software uh, in SBA's 3D animation and visual effects department. Marco's personal work explores his interest in professional, excuse me, in personal and collective histories using still images and video, and he helps run a terrific program at SVA. So now here's Marco Kovacevic. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you, Debbie, for that introduction, and uh, thank you to APA and Adorama for, for having me uh, here. Uh, I'm going to uh, share my screen, and, and we'll, we'll get started. Um, So can can you see my screen? Yes. Great. Um, so uh, we're going to talk today about uh, graduate study uh, in photography at SVA. Um, so uh, I'm going to introduce myself a little bit, although Debbie's already <laughs> sort of covered most of that. Uh, and uh, we'll talk uh, about SVA uh, as an institution, uh, a little bit of history and and. Uh, and things like and some some general information. We're going to talk a little bit about the difference between the MFA and the MPS degrees, which are the two degrees that SVA offers on a graduate level in photography. Uh, there are actually three uh, distinct master's programs uh, at at the School of Visual Arts um, uh, in photography. So we're going to uh, talk uh, uh, about the differences between those. And then I will focus primarily on uh, the MPS Digital Photography, which is the program that I work for. Um, uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, just because I do know the most about it. And uh, but if if one of the other programs is right for you, I'm happy to point you in the right direction, and um, and and help you with that. Um, and then we'll talk about SE admissions, and we'll kind of recap and see uh, uh, what what we've learned from this, and uh, uh, we'll open up to questions uh, from uh, from all of you. Um, so uh, as Debbie said, I am. Uh, uh, my name is Marco Kovacevic. I am the director of operations for the digital photography master's program at the School of Visual Arts. Um, I'm going to move to this other slide, which is some of my work. Uh, uh, I am a, a photographer. I, I do some video. Um, I have a kind of a background in some commercial work, but also fine art. Uh, I've curated some exhibitions for our department, especially at, at Photoville. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, I have a kind of a mixed mixed background. Um, uh, primarily at this point, I am an educator. I, I teach uh, at, at the school, both at a graduate and undergraduate level. And I kind of, this brings me to a point that I think is important. Uh, I feel like I'm actually a good, good person to talk about this topic because I have so many connections to SVA. Uh, when I first moved uh, to New York from Serbia, 
I sort of finished my undergraduate degree at SVA. Uh, I got my BFA in photography. Uh, then I started working there uh, and kind of made my way through through the school. And then at one point while I was working there, I also did my uh, my MFA uh, in photography uh, there. Uh, and, and since then I've been teaching uh, both on the graduate and the undergraduate level. So I really kind of have a very uh, rounded view of of the school as an institution, as a staff member, as a as an alum, as a as a faculty member, um, so I can really kind of cover these different bases and and answer a lot of your a lot of your different questions. And here are some just kind of what we were looking at are some examples of my editorial work, uh, still from a film that I did, a kind of a a performance piece and and things like that. Um, so let's let's talk about SVA. Uh, I know that a lot of uh, audience members uh, here are probably from New York, uh, and you're most likely familiar with SVA, if for, for nothing else than for for the subway posters that are really kind of part of of uh, the New York landscape. Uh, and one of them, uh, a, a, an older one from the 50th anniversary of the school, is here um, uh, as an illustration. Uh, so SVA uh, or the School of Visual Arts started in 1947. Uh, uh, sort of, it's closely related to to sort of the GI Bill and kind of uh, finding training for for people coming back from World War II. But it started as a cartoonist and illustrator school. It was a small school, I believe. It was three instructors and like thirty something uh, students. Um, but then it grew and kind of expanded. And in 1956, it became the School of Visual Arts. Um, uh, and then uh, in the 70s, uh, uh, it started uh, conferring uh, bachelor of fine arts degrees. Uh, and then about 10 years later, uh, uh, the first MFA degrees uh, as well. Uh, so it kind of really evolved from this kind of more technical uh, school to a, a more well-rounded kind of art education uh, institution that it is today. Um, and so to give you some some facts about, about SVA, um, uh, you know, there's... Uh, about there's over uh, 1,100 uh, uh, faculty at the school, and uh, one thing that the school is really well known for is uh, that faculty are sort of working professionals, people with experience in the field. This has been the case uh, since the very beginning, so it's sort of a, a basis of one of the the things that I feel like is the biggest benefit of of any kind of art education is is creating your network and your community uh, and getting to know all these people who are. Um, going to be uh, sort of important for your for your career. Um, at, at any given time, as we had about like seven thousand students uh, spread across uh, thirty different programs, undergraduate and graduate. Um, and again, uh, you know, this is a very large community, a very diverse community of people who, again, you know, if you are in a in a program, whether it's graduate or undergraduate, are going to become people that you're going to be working with. Uh, and, and again, more kind of connections that, that you're going to build. Um, and finally, you know, there's a, there's a huge alumni community, over 40, 42,000 people. Um, and, you know, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really great uh, uh, community of, of, of artists from, uh, you know, uh, Keith Haring to Rebecca Sugar to Brian Singer to Frank Oakenfels to like a lot of different uh, 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 photographers, videographers, animators, cartoonists. Um, that are uh, that are part of this uh, part of this community. Uh, in addition to to the sort of uh, degree programs, SVA also has uh, continuing education classes, which is a great resource uh, that I'm happy to touch upon uh, if if anybody has any questions. Um, but kind of taking one off classes, and then there's also pre college uh, study abroad programs, artist residencies. Um, just to kind of point out the little uh, the picture that's that's in this uh, is. Uh, recently, the the corner kind of where SVA is on 23rd Street and 3rd Avenue uh, was renamed SVA Way. Uh, so um, that's a, that's a fun little uh, fact. So as far as photography is concerned, uh, uh, SVA uh, has had photography for a very long time since kind of the 60s, and um, the oldest uh, and biggest uh, photography program at SVA is the undergraduate BFA photo. It's a four year. Uh, 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 program, uh, but we are here to talk more about the, the graduate studies. So there are three different um, uh, graduate programs in photography at SVA. Um, uh, one is the MFA photo, uh, video and related media, the MPS digital photography and MPS fashion. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about each one and then we will uh, focus uh, most on, on the digital photography program, which is uh, one that's kind of 
uh, closest to me as, as I, I uh, work there. Uh, but I will try to give you as much information about all of them and kind of uh, point out some parallels and differences. Uh, and then when we get to the Q&A in the end, I'm happy to kind of, uh, again, answer any questions that you, uh, that you have. Um, so, uh, but before we get into the individual programs and explain sort of the differences, I want to talk a little bit about the two types of degrees uh, that SVA offers in photography on a graduate level, which is the MFA, which is the Master of Fine Arts, and the MPS degree, which is a Master of Professional Studies. Uh, so MFA, of course, is the sort of older uh, and uh, degree, uh, and it is what is considered a terminal degree in the field uh, uh, of fine arts in the United States. Uh, in some other places in the world, like in Europe and Australia, uh, there is a more advanced degree in photography. There are some schools that offer PhDs in, in photography, um, but in the United States, the MFA is the terminal degree. And this is important uh, because if you are somebody who is really pursuing, let's say, a tenure track uh, position or a position that really kind of specifically uh, 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 requires a, a, a terminal degree in your field, then MFA uh, might be the right thing for you. Um, but in general, it's uh, the MFA programs tend to be longer. They're more focused on kind of both theory and uh, uh, history and kind of all of these things. And MPS is a is, uh, the Master of Professional Studies is a newer type of degree. Um, it is uh, a more technical, usually shorter program that's kind of uh, focused, uh, designed sort of for professionals who are uh, looking uh, to kind of uh, advance certain specific skills uh, in the field, and it's kind of more real world uh, oriented. Uh, I want to address at this point some questions that kind of come up often when when we have info sessions and things like that. Uh, both of these degrees, uh, if you are applying to an MFA or an MPS program, you need to have an undergraduate degree, right? Like this is, um, this has, it has to be, a, it could be a BFA or it doesn't have to be necessarily a degree in fine arts, uh, but you need to have completed uh, a, an undergraduate uh, degree of some sort. Uh, sometimes for people who are coming from abroad, uh, uh, there might be some issues with kind of equivalencies. Uh, so, <clears throat> If you, are, if you have studied abroad and you have a different type of degree, that needs to be converted into sort of U.S. equivalents. And there are uh, uh, sort of services that, that provide that, and there's actually links for that on the SVA website that I can point you to. I've also recently been getting this question quite a bit about kind of uh, people asking if some of what they've done in undergrad can be transferred onto the graduate level. Uh, and I just want to address that, that is not possible, right? Like, because uh, this is a separate degree. So even if you have possibly in undergrad taken a class that might be similar to something that you would be taking in, in grad school that cannot just automatically transfer, uh, but it could, you know, definitely be beneficial to you to have that skill and that, that knowledge. Um, so um, studying at SVA on a graduate level, I, I want to sort of talk a little bit about what the benefits of this uh, are, and this is kind of uh, across the various different disciplines and across the different programs. Uh, you know, uh, the curriculum at SEA is sort of up to date and, uh, uh, you know, it definitely addresses the, the relevant issues, uh, whether they are technical or conceptual or aesthetic. Um, I've already mentioned SEA faculty who are, uh, you know, people who have extensive experiences with uh, uh, in, in their fields. Uh, when we get to to the digital photography program, the program that I, I work for, I will sort of address some specific faculty members. Um, and then there's this amazing uh, community of, of, of students who come from all over the world and all kinds of different backgrounds um, and really uh, sort of contribute to that experience. Uh, the, the standards are high, the, the quality of the work is high, and you would, you would really see that if you go to any sort of SVA events and see the exhibitions, the, the, you know, the thesis events and all of these the screenings, uh, it's really an impressive, you know, I teach uh, in both the graduate level and undergraduate level. And for me, it's, it's very inspirational to, to, to see what, uh, what people are doing and to participate in some way and kind of contribute uh, with my feedback to, to this amazing, uh, these amazing bodies of work. Um, SVA has an incredible library and uh, other facilities, the SVA Theater, uh, you know, the uh, for, for graduate students, this, the Visible Futures Lab, all these different things that, that are really uh, amazing resources uh, to have 
uh, for, for any student. And finally, you know, uh, SVA is kind of really embedded into this uh, fabric of New York City. It is a really, uh, 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 you know, we, we are a, a sort of a, a, a scattered school. We have facilities that range from, uh, you know, uh, First Avenue to, to 11th Avenue, 12th Avenue, and across sort of multiple blocks. So really, New York City is kind of the campus. Uh, and um, and our, our community is very much kind of embedded in all these creative industries. So that that becomes part of part of that experience. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the three different uh, graduate programs. Uh, so the first one being MFA, Photography, Video, and Related Media. This is the, the first uh, uh, of, the, of the three master's programs that was created at SVA um, uh, in photography. I think it was 1988. Um, and uh, it is, uh, as I said, a terminal degree, right? So an MFA. Um, it is a two or three year program. So what do I mean by that? And, and by the way, I, I, I just also want to mention that this is the program that I've graduated from. I am a, an alum of MFA Photo, so I do know this program quite well, even though I don't I don't work there. Um, so a two or three year program. So if you are somebody who's coming from a photography background uh, in terms of your educational skills, uh, uh, so if you've done a, a BFA in photography or, or something like that, uh, you would probably end up in the two year program. But if you're coming from a different field, uh, uh, you might be required based on your portfolio and other sort of application requirements to do a two and a half or three year program with that first year or half year uh, being sort of introductory in some ways and helping kind of get you up to speed um, for, for your kind of uh, two main kind of two years. Um, as an MFA program, it is definitely ideal for people kind of going into a more fine art career, uh, or looking to exhibit, uh, and definitely, as we've discussed, uh, people who are maybe going for tenure track positions uh, where a terminal degree is required. Um, uh, another great thing about uh, MFA Photo is uh, that you can sort of personalize your curriculum to some degree because uh, there's a lot of different electives with really great instructors. Um, I remember as a student kind of being hard pressed to sort of choose uh, what, uh, what to, to, to select out of a really great selection. Um, definitely a lot of focus is given to aesthetics, history, critical thinking. There's a, a, a as an MFA, there's a decent a more a amount more of reading, writing, and, and, and similar things. Um, so the, the other program uh, uh, that, uh, that exists at SVA, that is a master's program, in this case, an MPS, uh, so a Master of Professional Studies, is the MPS in Fashion Photography. Uh, it is a one-year or two-semester, in this case, uh, um, uh, a program that is aimed at photographers who are trying to develop their skills in the uh, in in the genre of of, of fashion photography. Um, you know, fashion photography is uh, really kind of this very big field that's super inspirational, not just in the fashion world, but kind of has uh, its uh, uh, you know bleeds into all these other uh, fields like fine art and and things like that. Um, but it's also a very collaborative uh, field. So uh, I, this program addresses um, uh, not only the the, the, per the the photographer's sort of personal uh, style and sensibility, but really this kind of production of a fashion shoot and and collaborating, building this team of of people that uh, that you are going to work with, which is really important for for a fashion photographer. Um, so some really amazing work coming out of there. Um, and so uh, the, the third one that I am going to focus much of this presentation on is uh, the program that I help manage, uh, the, the MPS in digital photography. Um, and, uh, you know, I will, I will go through, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of an overview here, but I'll also go through kind of the structure of this program. And then towards the end, we're going, when we talk about sort of admissions and things like that, I will also address some specific issues are related to uh, the other two programs as well, uh, uh, kind of that, that are different. Um, but the MPS digital photography program is, uh, a, again, a one year like the fashion program, except that we are three semesters. Uh, we have a, a fall, a spring, and a, and a summer. Um, and uh, then we, uh, we are dedicated to working photographers, educators, uh, and second career professionals. The original idea uh, of this uh, uh, program when we started it, uh, when it started, this is a little bit before I joined in uh, 2007, was uh, to sort of, um, uh, 
you know, for, for a lot of people kind of coming out of film and things like that to kind of get the skills that they needed to transition into the digital world. Uh, we've definitely seen over time a lot more kind of second career uh, people who are maybe, you know, for whom photography was a hobby or, or an interest who are making kind of a transition to, to making it their profession, but also, you know, uh, people coming out of undergrad and, and, and wanting to sort of expand their skills. Um, we're definitely focused on a very, we're a very practical uh, program. Uh, uh, the word we use a lot is intense because it is a master's degree in one year. So there's a lot of ground to be covered. Uh, and it's really kind of go, go, go from the, from the very beginning. Uh, but, you know, the, the curriculum is really, uh, based around real world needs and and, and practical concerns. Uh, uh, so regardless of what kind of genre of photography you do, um, we try to make sure that that the work that you produce is uh, at, at its best technically, creatively, and and conceptually. Um, so here are some uh, sort of uh, snippets of of uh, uh, you know classwork and events and things like that uh, from uh, from across the years. Uh, from from our department, and um, uh, you know, I've mentioned earlier when I talked about SVA in general, uh, this amazing faculty. Uh, it's you know, it's too broad to talk about the 1,100 uh, uh, faculty members of all of SVA. So I'm going to to discuss just within our small kind of graduate program uh, 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 some of the people that, that teach there. So here's a a list of of, of some of our uh, some of our, our current uh, faculty. Um, so really, you know, from uh, uh, Greg Gorman, you know, this great celebrity portrait photographer who comes in from LA in the summer to teach uh, our, our uh, exhibition printing class to Deborah Klom Ching, who's the uh, one of the owners of the Klom Ching Gallery and a photo historian, uh, uh, teaching our, our contemporary image class and our exhibit class to uh, Stella Kramer, who is a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, editor who teaches our communications class to, of course, Elizabeth Abaddon, who's an amazing uh, uh, sort of advocate for photographers who teaches the book class. So, um, and, you know, this is sort of our department, but really uh, a similar kind of situation exists across uh, the various different SVA programs of people who really are kind of at, at the top of their game and, and, and doing the right, the right things. Um, so, the student body, uh, again, uh, we are a small cross section, our department, uh, but uh, it, it's similar in other in other departments as well, is a very diverse uh, uh, group of, of people, not in terms of just kind of where people come from, but also in terms of the genres of work that they do, uh, their different backgrounds, uh, you know, uh, their ages, uh, we, you know, in, in the, I've, I've been working for this department for about 11 uh, years. And in that time, we've had students who kind of came straight out of undergrad uh, at 22 and joined the program to people who retired at 72 and decided that they really want to kind of take their photography that was always a hobby to, to a professional level. So really, uh, you know, there is no uh, uh, right or wrong time to, to start. Um, and I think this range of ages and experiences and backgrounds, you know, people who have maybe come from business or medicine or uh, you know, some other art form into photography uh, brings this really great voice to the table when when work is being discussed. So I think it's a it's a great experience to have, and and one of the sort of unique benefits of of doing uh, uh, you know going to graduate school is being surrounded by this incredible community of of people. Um, and so. Um, I will again, uh, you know, uh, different different departments have different uh, uh, schedules, but I will talk about the the digital photography. So from this moment on, uh, uh, what we're looking at is is the MPS digital photography program um, uh, information. Um, uh, we, as I've mentioned, our program uh, runs fall, uh, spring, summer. Uh, all SVA graduate programs start in the fall. Actually, there's a couple that start in the summer that kind of have a, like a low residency situation, but in terms of the photography departments, all of them start in September. Um, and so for us, for the digital photo department, uh, we try to organize our classes into three days uh, in the spring and the fall, um, Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. This is because we are aware that, you know, our, our students uh, potentially are working. Uh, they also need time to produce work for, for classes, for assignments. So we try to compress uh, these, these classes into three days. They're generally kind of in the afternoons and evenings, so sort of three o'clock to 10 
o'clock, so 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, and on Mondays, we usually have one or two classes. Tuesdays, we have a class, and then oftentimes uh, sort of uh, one of these enrichment classes that I'll talk about in a second. And Wednesday, again, one or two classes, leaving the remaining four days uh, uh, so that you can kind of plan your, your, the rest of your life around it, which isn't easy. Uh, being in grad school is hard work and it's, uh, and it is intense and, 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 uh, you know, there's a lot, a lot to be done. So it takes a, a lot of effort to kind of balance things, but we've definitely had people in the program who, you know, have a job or have kids or, um, have a, you know, a career of some sort that, that managed to, to balance, uh, but it's definitely a, a skill, uh, to, to do so. Um, so, Again, some uh, images from, you know, critiques and uh, reviews and exhibitions just to kind of get a sense of, of, of the community and the experience. Um, so in the fall semester, uh, which uh, is September to December, so SVA's uh, program runs, uh, we start sort of right after Labor Day and we run up until kind of right before Christmas uh, for the fall for the fall semester, uh, the digital photography department offers uh, four kind of main classes and then some additional some additional things. So um, these are uh, definitely we we call the fall sort of our more technical uh, uh, semester uh, where we address primarily the skills uh, that are that are needed to kind of uh, complete the rest. So um, digital color and uh, capture and workflow, uh, which is taught by Michael Kaminsky and and Joe Sinnett is um, sort of really about knowing your equipment, your lighting, uh, managing your workflow properly from, from the moment of capture through processing through all these different things. So going whether from, you know, whether it's tethered capture through capture one or, uh, you know, organizing your work in Lightroom um, and then all the way through to kind of uh, skills that are needed in the studio or on the, in, in sort of outside and in the field to, sh to shoot and, and prepare for a shoot. Um, and uh, finally, kind of the skills that are needed for compositing work. So uh, a shooting for compositing, matching perspective, matching lighting, uh, all of these different things. So it's a, it's a really kind of intense uh, class that covers a lot of uh, very important ground. And this class is uh, related and kind of connected in some ways to the advanced image processing class, which is taught by Jamie Cody Rossman, um, which then covers the software skills uh, that you need. So going from Lightroom to, to Photoshop, um, a little bit of bridge as well, and then a uh, retouching compositing skill, uh, skills in software. Um, uh, the other sort of big technical class is the color management output class, which is taught by our chair, uh, Tom Ash, um, uh, which is about sort of matching what you see on the screen uh, to a print or to output that's going somewhere else, working with printers, working with printing presses, working with uh, sort of third party, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, printing companies. Uh, and, and Tom is, is really uh, a, an amazing resource uh, on this. He, he wrote this incredible book about color management uh, and uh, is very passionate about this topic. Um, so it's, it's a great class to take. I, I took Tom a, sort of a similar version of this class when I was in undergrad with Tom and it really it really sort of opened up my mind. For those of you who are not maybe interested in grad school, he also uh, does a, a, a continuing ed class uh, with a similar topic. And then um, the editorial photography class, which I co-teach with Jim Estrin from the New York Times, uh, who's a photojournalist and writer and a photographer, um, is kind of a storytelling class, so telling stories through images, giving you uh, kind of real world assignments, um, and, you know, whether it's a, it's a three week photo essay or an, uh, uh, sort of environmental portrait. Um, but it's also a great, uh, kind of class to sort of workshop, maybe ideas for, for larger projects and, and things like that. Um, in a, now, of course, as I've said, you know, we have, uh, our classes tend to kind of be organized in these three, uh, days. Uh, but that doesn't mean that that's kind of it. We often have other events, uh, uh, workshops, seminars. Uh, uh, we run something called Light Club, which is sort of a, a group where we meet and talk about lighting. Um, and then one big thing that I will talk a little bit later about is our I3 lecture series, which is a class for our students, but it's a public event. So I'll definitely, I would definitely like your, your community to know about this um, because it's something that is open to the public and, and, and I think is important to know about. Um, and, and uh, you know, uh, so in the spring semester, which starts in January and kind of runs through May, 
Um, the big focus is on thesis, right? And so uh, just to kind of address this, uh, all the graduate programs have a thesis uh, component uh, in the MFA program, the thesis, uh, you kind of have a whole year to do it. It also has a, in the MFA photo program, it has a much more uh, intense kind of written component uh, uh, to it. Uh, in, we also have a, a written thesis proposal, but it's kind of more of a running document that kind of helps you uh, develop this. But really, a thesis is a uh, self-motivated body of work that we provide you with sort of support for and help for to develop. And this is something that often brings people to grad school uh, is, you know, even, even very established photographers with great careers and kind of commercial success who sometimes feel like, maybe they're not really sure what it, what their own work is anymore because they're working for clients or they're uh, uh, doing work that sort of has started to feel possibly automatic or um, uninspiring or, or just kind of maybe they're not sure what, it, what, what, what they want anymore. So uh, we've, we've heard this story definitely many times uh, and this is a kind of chance for them to explore their own style and kind of be, be a little bit more free without the constraints of a, of a client or an art director or somebody um, kind of hovering over their head. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, the thesis development class is a class that's taught, uh, in this case, by Michael Foley, who's the executive director of the Leica Gallery uh, uh, here in, in New York, and who used to run the, the Foley Gallery. Uh, and um, it's a critique class, uh, and you also get paired with a, with a thesis advisor who's a photo professional kind of to help you uh, uh, develop this, uh, this project. Uh, design essentials uh, uh, is something that uh, is very important. Photographers uh, are often amazing photographers, are not necessarily great designers <laughs> or uh, in, or sort of in terms of presenting their work or designing their business cards or things like that. So uh, this is taught by Ben Bobkoff, who's an alum of our program and an amazing instructor, an amazing designer um, that covers the skills of like typography, uh, illustrator, InDesign, um, and, and prepares you in some way for the book class in this, uh, that we have in the summer, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, but uh, really kind of get, getting you those, those skills that you need and, and kind of thinking about uh, your, your branding uh, and things like that. Um, the, the next class that, that we have is something that I think is fairly unique to the, uh, to the digital photography master's program, uh, the, the business class, which is uh, a class that addresses you know, the, the important issues of the, the fact that photography is a business, right? And it's a, it's not an easy business. And as a photographer, you are often, uh, you know, your own social media person and your own accountant and your own uh, studio manager, um, in addition to being a creative. Um, so this class addresses issues like copyright and uh, invoicing and uh, treatments and, uh, you know, pitching to, to a client and all of these different things and kind of culminates with this uh, creating a, a business plan for yourself of kind of when you leave grad school, what are the steps that you're going to take? Um, and it's taught by three instructors, Jack Rosnicki, who's a commercial photographer, a longtime commercial photographer and a, a copyright expert who co-wrote a book about this. Uh, Brooklyn Tavish, who's an uh, alum of our program, who comes from the kind of corporate side and really brings this sort of business knowledge to this class. And Laura O'Neill, who's an editor at the New York Times, um, bringing this sort of uh, editorial and freelance uh, kind of uh, 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 element to this class. Uh, it's a class that definitely our students are always excited uh, to kind of go back to and and review their notes every time there's like a new uh, 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 job offer or something uh, on their plate. Um, and of course, uh, uh, motion sound and video uh, is a class that we also offer in the summer. Uh, you know, definitely uh, we've always had a little bit of video in the program and it's been kind of expanding because as you know, if, if you are all uh, uh, photo professionals, you probably know that video is now really a big part of all, all photographers work, whether it's BTS or a GIF or uh, something that you need to produce. So this class covers both the sort of technical things like how to light for video, how to record sound, but also, and also how to edit uh, video. Uh, <clears throat> but it is tied in with your thesis project uh, so that it kind of doesn't double up uh, too much of your work. And again, some additional activities, including our lectures, are, are there. Um, now, in addition to all these great instructors, um, we've, let me just sort of just quickly go back. Um, I clicked too fast. Um, 
So um, in addition to our regular instructors, uh, you know, we have uh, an amazing roster of uh, guest lecturers. Of course, this is you know a selection of people that have spoken over the last several years. Uh, they they don't all speak <laughs> every year, uh, but uh, it's a it's a really kind of great kind of who's who of of, uh, of photographers. And this is similar in other departments as well. And and this is kind of part of an, another really important uh, thing that I've mentioned about being in grad school is building this community and building your network. Because people that come to speak to you, you are able to meet, you're able to talk to, ask questions, uh, send a follow-up email. Uh, these are people that then later oftentimes become mentors or thesis advisors uh, to our students. Uh, and they're part of the community. And it's definitely easier to reach someone once they're kind of already in your orbit somewhere. So um, it's really uh, it's really an amazing, an amazing resource. Um, and then, you know, um, enrichment, uh, uh, I've mentioned, I'll talk a little bit about our I3 lecture series. Uh, we have a contemporary image class that kind of gives our students some additional uh, kind of context of where their work fits into like a historical context. But then there's many workshops, uh, gallery visits, and, and, and professional opportunities that, that, that are offered. So just to talk a little bit about our I3 lecture series, I'm hoping that many of you know about this because it's a, it's a, it's a lecture series that's been running for about 12 years now. Um, and uh, it's every other Tuesday. It's a live event at SVA, so it's open to the public. You just have to register an Eventbrite. Um, currently, it's uh, it's hosted and curated by Julie Graham, uh, uh, who uh, runs the A Curator uh, website and is a photo consultant and curator. Um, and it's basically every two weeks, we bring in a photographer, a gallerist, uh, a retoucher, uh, you know, somebody who runs a photo archive or works in a museum with photography to talk about their career and experiences. Because I think it's important for our students and for the general public to understand kind of the breadth of the photography industry and the, the different kinds of careers that are possible, right? Like from people who are fully kind of committed to just making fine art to people who are doing multiple things, kind of combining them into, into a successful career. And from people who are, you know, uh, just starting out to people who are, uh, you know, at the peak of their career. Um, so it's a really great resource. Uh, if you don't know about it, please come and, and, and visit. Um, and if you uh, can't, we record all these lectures and our archive of past I3 lectures is available on YouTube and Vimeo. Um, there's over 200 of them already, uh, and it's uh, you know it's a it's a really amazing source of inspiration uh, for anybody who's in the photo world. Um, again, some more kind of uh, just sense of of of, of the place, uh, going to to visits, having lectures, doing uh, workshops. Um, uh, this sense of community that that is really important. Um, uh, you know, to, to create, the, to, to meet these people who can really help you sort of uh, move forward. Um, our summer session, uh, again, this is sort of the digital photo program, uh, is uh, uh, from May to July, and it's sort of the wrap up of our, of our program. Uh, we have what we call our thesis sequence, which where you're producing the forms that your thesis will take. So you've kind of mostly finished shooting the, 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 the imagery uh, that you have. And uh, now you have to produce the materials that you kind of need to have to, to, to graduate. So that means your book uh, and branding materials, your business card, your leave behinds, things that you need for uh, once you leave school and you want to present yourself at a portfolio review or uh, to a gallerist or to an editor, uh, you have the right materials. This class is taught by Elizabeth Abaddon. The electronic portfolio, which addresses any kind of issues that you need around your web presentation, so your website, your social media, search engine optimization, which is taught by Jamie Cody Rossman and Matthew Richmond from Adobe. Um, the exhibit class, which is all about sort of how to finish your work, how to pre prepare your work for exhibiting, how to deal with gallerists and galleries, how to deal with editioning and um, and and pricing and all these things, taught by Deborah Klom Ching. Uh, the exhibition printing class, which is taught by Greg Gorman and, and Tom Ash, uh, where you're actually producing exhibition prints, deciding the right type of media, so the paper, the, the size, uh, how it's going to be framed. Um, and then the professional communication class, which is taught by Russell Hart. Uh, the, we have actually, the, this class has two uh, elements, the written and the, the spoken part. So the written part is taught by Russell Hart. 
addressing your artist statement, the uh, text on your website, the text in your book, uh, um, captions for your images, your resume, your bio, all of these materials that you need to present yourself and the spoken part, which is taught by Stella Kramer of how to kind of talk about your work and, uh, you know, from, from a long presentation to an elevator pitch, uh, how you can sort of uh, say what, uh, what is important. Um, we also have a run wonderful handmade book class uh, that is an elective uh, taught by uh, Therese Geithler. Uh, so here's some pictures from our, our summer, um, just kind of a more workshoppy, fun um, uh, um, period where like there's, there's uh, the structure that I described in the uh, fall and spring of kind of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday isn't really, the summer is a lot more condensed. So definitely there's, uh, the, the schedule is a little more irregular than that. Um, and so regardless whether you are in uh, in the MFA uh, in the MPS digital photo program or the um, one of the other departments, there's a commencement ceremony in May. Uh, for most departments at SV, that is actually the completion of their program. For the digital photography students, it's just another uh, Monday in May because the next day they have to continue with their summer semester. But it's a wonderful uh, ceremony at Radio City Music Hall, which is something you don't want to miss, even if you're not technically graduating just yet. Um, there's a thesis review for uh, so for the MFA program, for instance, there is a thesis defense that you have to do beforehand. Uh, it's earlier, it's kind of in, in April, I believe, uh, where you are sort of defending your thesis. In, in our case, it's a presentation uh, where you are sort of presenting to a panel of, of, of photo professionals uh, about your work. So it's a little bit different. Um, and then uh, 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 every program uh, culminates in an exhibition or a screening. Uh, our exhibition is in the fall. Some exhibitions are in the spring, uh, depending on when the when the program ends. Which is again a really great experience uh, to have. So, um, what happens after you graduate from 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 a graduate program? Well, we have you know our graduates sort of really uh, we try to sort of as I said uh, uh, showcase photography as a very broad field uh, where, where there's a lot of different kinds of career opportunities. Um, so we have people who are working as commercial fashion, uh, fine art, documentary, editorial photographers, right? And they are uh, shooting for a living. Um, but then there's also high-end retouchers, uh, printers, studio managers, people who write books or, uh, you know, teach, uh, or more likely than not, people who have some sort of combination of these things uh, and are and are doing multiple things. You know what we often hear from photographers is you know uh, people who are doing commercial work to support their fine art work and similar things. So we really try to sort of bring that knowledge to our to our students. Um, another great resource in this case is the SVA Career Placement Office, which has some really great opportunities and can help uh, people leaving grad schools, uh, grad school. And again, this community comes into play here because. Uh, the school itself is very well connected to the creative world of New York City uh, and the world. And so oftentimes we will get a, a call or, you know, uh, from somebody being like, I need a photographer who can do this, or I need an assistant for this kind of shoot. Um, and we will sort of pull up our list of alumni and go down and be like, okay, this person does this kind of work. Let's let's send it to them. So, um, and the same thing happens between the students themselves and between faculty members and students. So it's really, you know, it kind of, um, uh, you know, becomes this kind of echo effect where like things really grow uh, exponentially when uh, uh, when you're connected to this many people. Um, now, for anybody who's sort of, interested in applying to a graduate program. Uh, and this, again, doesn't have to be a photography program or it doesn't have to be our digital photography program. It can be something else. Um, there's some basic requirements, uh, a resume, uh, a statement of purpose, right? A resume, uh, you know, or a CV uh, by uh, kind of ex explaining what, what you have been doing and a statement of purpose really sort of talking about yourself. What is it that you do? What are you interested in? Uh, why are you interested in the specific program that you are applying to? What do you think that is going to bring to you, to your career? Uh, also, it's interesting to hear what you feel you are contributing to a program, right? Like we, we love to we love to see sort of what you are bringing to the table. Um, you need letters of recommendation. And for somebody who's maybe not from a photo background, that sometimes feels daunting, but it doesn't have to be, you know, a, a, a photographer who's writing your recommendation. It could be a former instructor or, or an employer or, you know, anybody who can kind of vouch for you either personally or professionally um, uh, uh, in that way. Um, 
Of course, you will need official, we mentioned transcripts before from any college or university that you've attended. Attended if you uh, are an international student, there are language requirements that you need, so a TOEFL or a Yelts exam and a portfolio. I'll talk about the portfolio in a second, but uh, you know, if you're interested in any kind of uh, graduate study at SVA, I would reach out to grad admissions at, at SVA.edu. Uh, they are extremely knowledgeable and can really point you in the right direction, provide all the right information um, uh, for, for how, to, how to continue with this. Um, now, the portfolio uh, is an extremely important uh, element of any application. It's what uh, sort of carries the most weight uh, uh, of, of all of these things. Um, and you want to showcase a portfolio that is cohesive, that you are proud of. Um, so this, uh, in an ideal world, this is sort of several cohesive groups or bodies of work. So if you are somebody who does landscape and portrait, maybe you do 10 landscapes and 10 portraits, right? Uh, what, what usually uh, committees don't like to see is sort of 20 completely random uh, images that have no connection. Uh, so even if you do sort of shoot, uh, you know, a lot of different things, try to sort of think about sequencing and how these images are ordered so that there is some progression uh, through this. Um, there are some differences in what the requirements are. The uh, MFA photo and the MPS fashion program require uh, 20 uh, flattened JPEGs. Uh, our department, the digital photography department, actually asks for 15 flat JPEGs and five layered PSD files where we can see sort of a little bit of the processing that you do on your images. This doesn't have to be extensive, uh, but we need to see that you're kind of making some sort of improvement to your image. Um, definitely one piece of advice that I would have I mean, this is really the case if you're applying for anything, is paying really close attention to what is required of you, um, naming your files correctly, uh, having them be the right uh, pixel dimensions, the right color space, the right bit depth. Um, it, it can be a deciding factor. It can definitely, or it could completely be a disqualifying factor in some cases. So it's really important to meet those requirements. And finally, like just apply work that you're proud of and that you're happy with, right? Like don't think, don't apply with things that you think a committee wants to see. Um, you know, do work that 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 you are happy with and that you feel best represents you because you really want to be doing, you want to be accepted based on on what you really want to be doing. Um, and sort of to, to recap a little bit, uh, you know, everything that we've talked about um, and why, you know, the, one of the kind of central questions of how we framed this talk is, what is, is grad, graduate school right for you? Um, and, you know, it's definitely an opportunity to build your skills. Uh, uh, as I've mentioned, SVA has incredible faculty, really great classes, really great facilities. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a good way to sort of, in a relatively short amount of time, uh, build up a lot of different skills. Uh, it is an investment in yourself. We sometimes say kind of you're hiring yourself for a year or two years to uh, to work on this this project to to sort of uh, have focused time on your practice. I know as a as a as an educator and a creative person that I find it very hard to find time to make my own uh, work because I have so many other things. And um, we understand that uh, uh, graduate school is. Uh, expensive and time consuming, but because you're making this commitment, uh, it really forces people to sort of focus on this thing, right? Like since you kind of made this decision, it's a really big thing uh, and it's a lot of investment, both in terms of finance and time, uh, you can sort of really dig into it deeply and, and, and explore where you are and who you are and what, what you would like to become. Um, and then, of course, this uh, I, I brought it up over and over again, building your community, uh, uh, developing your network, which is your faculty, the staff at the school, uh, but, but also all of the people that you go to school with who will kind of become uh, a part of your extended uh, community. Uh, <clears throat> and figuring out what is the next step in your career. Uh, we've definitely seen with a lot of our students uh, being you know, second career professionals or coming from, uh, uh, you know, trying to kind of make some sort of change. This is, uh, you know, a really big life event that kind of forces you to really think about things and, and reset. Um, so that is, a, that is an important uh, kind of uh, a way to figure out, uh, you know, what, what, what is next for me. Um, so 
that is, uh, uh, you know, everything that I, I wanted to say. Uh, uh, follow us on, on social media. Uh, I've, I've provided here some links to uh, the various, all the three departments that I've talked about uh, and a general kind of SVA and SVA alumni uh, account. Uh, so uh, please uh, uh, check them out. And also just to kind of uh, really quickly uh, uh, tell you, if you want to contact uh, me or uh, one of the other departments for graduate admissions, there's, you know, there's too many uh, different things that I've mentioned here. So uh, I would suggest going to sva.edu, which is the, the, the school's website, and there's pages for all the different departments for admissions, for, uh, for the different graduate programs, for continuing education, um, and find the best way to contact them. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have um, now. Hey. Hey, uh, Marco, this was fantastic. Um, and uh, I'm sitting here listening to this. You can unshare your screen now if you, if you like. Oh, yes, yes, um, yes, of course. Um, uh, I was listening to this and thinking, I want to get my graduate degree in digital <laughs> photography. Um, so we'll see if that happens. But in any event, we have some questions. Sure. Uh, one question is, are there specific niches of photography that it makes the most sense to get a graduate degree in, i.e., you know, fashion, macro, wedding, street? Um, well, it's an interesting question. I mean, there's definitely no requirement to have a, an advanced degree to be a photographer, right? Like we, we all know plenty of photographers who uh, in, in various different fields who are self-taught or, or have an undergraduate degree. Um, so... Um, I do think that, um, you know, if you're trying to sort of get up to speed and really kind of consolidate your knowledge and, 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 and figure things out, it's a really great resource. Um, but we've had, you know, we've had every possible genre and kind of work, uh, in, in the program and, um, you know, it's, it's, Sometimes people are required to do to get have a degree for for a job or something like that, but that's not that's not always the case. Um, so you know, I would say uh, it's also based on like kind of the skills that you need. If you are somebody who, let's say, uh, is a self taught photographer and you're doing relatively well, uh, but you're feeling the need that you you know you're you're being asked to do more video or more um, printing, and it's not something that you have, uh, maybe it's it's something that you explore. Um, now, of course, it, you may not need to go all the way to grad school. Uh, as I've mentioned, there are continuing ed classes, there are courses online. Uh, I think what, what is the benefit of being in grad school is that it is so complete and that it is so focused and so intense and kind of uh, you're, you live, sleep and breathe it for, for the time that you're there. Um, and, and, and you know that, you know, if you're going to a school like SVA, you really know that the content that you're getting is coming from the right sources and is, and is really high quality, which is something that you may not know if you're just kind of finding a course online or, or doing something like that. So, um, you know, I, it's, 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 as I've mentioned, it's a big investment of time and money and it's, it's a really personal choice. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I hope that answers it to, to some degree. Well, uh, he, the same person followed up and asked, are there any particular uh, uh, niches in photography that you feel would most benefit from um, degree? Um, well, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's, for instance, if you are a fashion photographer and you're looking to build your uh, network and the skills to kind of, uh, kind of take that further, doing the fashion M MPS might be a really great, uh, a really great thing. Um, if you are, uh, you know, uh, our, our department definitely kind of is the most technical in some ways. So um, if whatever you're doing kind of requires you to sort of get up to speed with, you know, uh, the skills of a digital tech, the uh, uh, retouching, processing, all of these things, uh, maybe we are the right fit, right? Like if you are, you um, you know, going into teaching or something that kind of requires a lot more kind of theoretical knowledge than maybe the MFA photo program is a good fit. Um, so I I don't know. I mean, I would actually recommend, you know, uh, uh, talking, maybe setting up a time to, to talk to the different departments and, and finding out more information and kind of really speaking from your own personal experience. Like, here's what I do. Uh, here's what I would like to do. Um, 
how can how can I get there? Um, and you know, uh, we'd be happy to to talk to you. Uh, this uh, you mentioned the uh, thesis defense, and so right. the question is, what is the process of this? that? Sounds scary. What what exactly? <laughs> It can be. I, I, I definitely found mine to be scary. But so uh, just to kind of uh, differentiate. So in, in some departments, in some uh, uh, usually in the MFA programs, you have a defense in uh, in uh, in, a, in our department. There's a, a, a thesis presentation, which is a lot less scary. Uh, but a defense is uh, there's a committee of some sort of, of you know, professionals in the field uh, and you have to, you've been sort of writing about your work and you've created your work and you have to sort of sell it to them in some way and kind of ex, you know prove that what you're doing is is sort of the right response to the the thing that you are uh, kind of arguing uh, and uh, a defense means that you can kind of pass or fail right like of course if you fail you have to do it again um, but it's um, yes it can be it can be scary. Um, but it also really kind of forces you to very seriously think about the choices that you're making. And, uh, you know, and, and so in an, in an MFA program, it's a lot about the references that you're making, the, the choice, like why you've made the choice that you've made, kind of where your work fits into other things. In, in, in a program like, like the one that I work for, where it's a presentation, you, it's, it's more sort of like, here's the work that I've done, and you get feedback from a committee of, of, of photo professionals, um, but you're done, right? Like you're not passing or failing. They will give you feedback and say, you could do this better, or uh, you know, here's the things that you can do, but um, it's definitely a less less scary process. Uh, we had a comment from uh, an alumni who said, okay. uh, uh, "Such an in, an in depth presentation. I'm at a loss at even asking a question that Marco hasn't already answered." Well, um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and we have another question here, and also another alumni said, "Absolutely great." in-depth technical program enabling photographers to handle today's multi multifaceted skills. Um, we have we, another we try. We really, we really do. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, these challenges are, you know, are ever evolving, right? Like, you know, there's a, there's a huge discussion at SVA about AI and where that fits into our, into our world. And, you know, like it's, it's, uh, and, and we will address everything as, as it happens, you know, it, it's, uh, we, we have to. Um, um, do you ever get, uh, one question someone asked, do you ever, uh, find the students that come because they have a love of photography and, uh, and it, it changes because their passion is turned into going to school, which I guess it would be the same as, uh, your passion turned into a working job, uh, you know, uh, your yeah, living. So it's kind I of think, the same thing. I think it's sort of, all of this is kind of organic in some ways. And I think, it's good to have goals and specific goals, but also to be open to whatever life brings. We've definitely had people coming in wanting to do a specific kind of photography or, or having some sort of idea that, oh, I want to do work that I think is going to get me paid. But really what we found over and over again is that people tend to thrive the most when they do the work that they like. Um, and, and, and also that even people who do commercial work usually kind of get hired because of something that, because of the personal work, right? Like, uh, which is where your real creativity and passion kind of comes out. Um, so yeah, we've, we've had people sort of switch uh, and, and um, you know, I, when I did my MFA, I went into it kind of thinking that my thesis project is going to be sort of a fairly kind of documentary still image photography project, like a book or something. And I ended up making a, a narrative, you know, video, uh, scripted, acted. Uh, so it it really, uh, you know, things can go, I think it's just important to kind of listen and 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 hear what people are saying and and then sort of think about it and and respond to it in in whatever way comes naturally. Yeah. Well, uh, that, uh concludes our, our, our questions and uh, thank you. I mean, I'm thinking now of, can I do this? Can I just, my only undergrad degree is from uh, Ringling Brothers Clown College. So I don't know <laughs> if I can master in photography, well, but you sold me on. 
Well, I do, I do want to say that, you know, it's not required to have a degree in photography to study photography at a master's level. As I, you know, I, I have mentioned that in a program like the MFA photo program that if you don't have a degree in photography, you might have to like do the longer <clears throat> version. Um, but, you know, we've had people come in from, from all kinds of different fields, like, you know, an anesthesiologist uh, or uh, a dentist or a lawyer uh, uh, who just liked photography and did photography. Uh, you know, we really judge based on a portfolio and, and other, other elements. So um, if we feel like you have the eye for it and that you could benefit from the program and that uh, it would be good to have you in the program, it's, you know, Ringling Brothers uh, is great. So, um, yeah. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much, Marco. And thank you for SVA for doing this. And Akiva, if you're here from uh, Adorama, if you want to sign back on or um, uh, thank, thank you, you, Adorama, for hosting us. And uh, we'll have another talk. We do this once a month, APA. And uh, uh, May 16th will be our next one uh, in uh, live streamed and in the event space. And uh Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, thank you. Bye. Debbie, do we?